I'm curious to get your thoughts. They say uh, in, in various parts here, but one of the keys that despite what is a clear factual record establishing AWS's technical superiority over Microsoft, including broad consensus among industry analysts and experts who assessed AWS as the front runner. Does, does that make sense to you? Do you believe AWS is clearly technologically superior to Microsoft's Azure? Well, well I, look, I, I think if you just look at the market share numbers, it would imply that, right? Um, AWS's market share, even in sort of the most generous standards, is roughly three times that of Microsoft's within, within cloud. Um, it's clearly a decision, decision that companies make on a regular basis. AWS had their um, uh, developer conference last week, 53,000 cloud developers out there, a, a 120 different products that were announced or, or talked about at the, at, at the event. Um, and so I think it's a hard argument to make and you see independent sort of um, uh, IT analysts, whether it's you know, Gartner or IDC, make those claims all the time that, that AWS is far, is that far ahead of the other competitors in the, in the space. So I think it, it, it is an easy statement for Amazon to make that, that they are technological logically superior to the other cloud providers out there. Yeah, this Jedi contract itself, it's valued at up to $10 billion over 10 years. In terms of DOD contract work, it's not the largest contractor program by any means out there, but part of the reason we've been covering it so closely is what it represents in terms of future government opportunities. Have you crunched those numbers and what does it mean for Amazon, Microsoft, and others? Well, I think, I think one, obviously, Government is, is the biggest single customer out there for any of these platforms. And for Amazon, this was an opportunity to draw a line in the sand because you had a very public record of the administration trying to sway this in, you know, on, on Twitter and elsewhere um, and, and making it very clear that they had a view on what Amazon's, or what the outcome of this contract should be. You had the same thing with the postal service negotiations um, a few years ago uh, that led to a lot of Amazon's investments into their own last mile delivery. And so when you've got something that's that vocal in the public record, being able to suggest that there was something more going on behind the scenes isn't that hard. Let's talk Google Alphabet. Um, just a few days ago, Larry Page announced that he's stepping back. He uh, and Sergey Brin still going to be on the board, but he's not CEO, he's not chairman. And Sundar Pichai, now CEO of both Alphabet and Google. A, does it matter? And B, does this kind of blow up the whole reason for doing the Alphabet Google thing if there's one CEO of both? Well, you know, I, I think it's a realization that ultimately at the end of the day, Google's what mattered within Alphabet, right? 98% of revenue, well more than 100% of profitability within that, within that business. And so to the extent that Sundar was the one running Google, he was effectively running, running Alphabet. He was running what mattered, certainly what running, running what mattered the most to investors. Well, now isn't everybody going to ask how long before Sundar cuts the Alphabet stuff, which was the whole point of separating the two? Yeah. Does this put them in a worse situation when it comes to investment in the future? Well, I think Sundar is, is certainly going to take a, a, a more serious look at, um, at those areas of investment, but a company like Google has to invest for, for, for the future, right? Things like autonomous driving, things like the investments that they've been making in but AI I think they have the largest learning. CapEx of virtually any company out there. Right. Do they need that? I think, what do they spend, $22 billion or more? Right. I don't know. My, is that roughly right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's around there, those, those levels. It's more than AT&T spends. It's more than Verizon spends. I mean, but they've also got the profitability levels to be able to put that back into the business, right? You want to see companies like that investing. If they're not, then you've got to question whether or not the future's there. If, if Google's not investing at those levels, if Alphabet's not investing at those levels, you've got to question, have they run out of good ideas? And I think that's not the direction that Sundar wants to take the company. What happens to Waymo? Um, I think it's, you know, clearly it's something that they're going to continue to invest in and build, right? They're considered the leader in that space, in that space right now. It's certainly not something that they're going to step away from. Do you think Amazon, back to Amazon for a yeah. second, you know, in this, uh, in this complaint talking about what they say was uh, the president's intervention uh, in the award of the Jedi contract, do you think that they raised the stakes even more and perhaps raised the threat to them, given the president certainly has, has made it no secret and seems to at least try to, to make things more difficult for them if he can? Well, I think there's only so much that they can do. This is the this is the first step in the in the, the process, and I think they'll see how far this this can take them. We we'll talk about SaaS companies. Uh, they had taken a beating during the fall, but I'm looking at Shopify, which is really a platform as well as being a retail play. Adobe, Salesforce, all those have rebounded, but not all the rest have. Do do you think that it's 
it makes sense fundamentally that those have rebounded and the others haven't? Or do they are they likely to come back down or some others like say Workday like likely to yeah. come back up? Yeah, so that's a little bit outside of my world. You know, I'm, I'm much more focused on the internet space, but I think if you look at tech broadly, there's been a real dispersion in terms of, of outperformers and underperformers in the in the, the space. Something like like Shopify that's got the exposure to e-commerce that they do. You know, we're seeing very strong numbers um, coming out of Black Friday already, 20% growth in, in e-commerce spending. So you've seen the kind of outperformance across that, that group benefiting them as a whole. Um, you've still got real meaningful underperformance Within within tech um, that have that have missed this kind of this kind of rally, the ones particularly that are sort of most exposed to regulation have been have been central to that. And so I think this hasn't been the kind of rally that's been across the entire market. It's been much more company specific because of factors like that.